Hello, my name is Pawan Sharma. I am from Avaya Global Support Services. This video is about basic troubleshooting and well check on Avaya or Association Border Controller for Enterprise. So I have logged into user interface of EMS. We'll start with basic troubleshooting and health check. As we can see over here, there is one alarms displayed on the dashboard for the installed devices. If we go on the top over here and click on alarms, this is the section where the alarms can be viewed for both EMS as well as DSPCE. As we can see over here, there is one active alarm with the state on and the time when it has been delivered. The alarms will be raised on the SBC in case there is any link failure on the interfaces, in case there are any heartbeat missed or uh, there are issues with the hardware, there are issues with the processes that have been restarted, etc. The alarms can be cleared by selecting the alarms and then clicking on the box clear selected. Next we will check incidents. So incident viewer will give you all the different type of uh, errors or different type of messages that have been dropped by SPC due to some policy that have not been matched. For example over here for this particular message because as we can see there is no subscriber flow matched for this particular options message. We can see the call ID over here, the destination IP and the source IP. So this incident viewer give you all different types of incidences that have happened in past on this particular SPC as well as on the EMS. Over here there are also different type of filters for example authentication the high availability in case there are any issues with the HA uh, or in case the HA messages are successful all the messages would be listed over here in incident viewer. The other category is policy as we saw regarding the options message, uh, TLS certificate, uh, messages related to licensing they would all be displayed over here. So we can select over here and the filter would be applied. I'll close this one. We'll move to status, SIP statistics. Here in statistics we were we can see the active TCP registrations, the active number of TLS registrations at this moment, the active concurrent calls, uh, the total calls rejected due to policy violations. For example, the call is coming from unknown source. The total calls failed or the total registrations dropped due to missing policy. For example, the register message is coming from the endpoint which is not known to SPC. All these numbers are cumulative numbers that are listed since the SBC have been installed. So there is an option to reset this number over here. Similarly, we have the other tabs over here for CS summary the number of 1x mobile user logins failed or succeeded and similar the other tabs like subscriber flow, server flow, policy, uh, from and to URI and transcoding summary. I'll close this one. 
Next is user registration. So this particular window gives the details regarding the number of users which are currently registered via the HBC to the session manager or any other SIP register. As you can see over here, the address of record, the instance and the IP address as well as the registration scale. So right now only one user is registered. We we'll move to next window. Server status. So server status. This gives the health of the links between the SBC and the call server or the trunk server. So here we can see the status is up. So the link between the SBC and the session manager with the TCP transport and TLS transport that now is up. This gives an important information in case the calls are failing towards the service provider, the trunk provider. We can come over here and check the status whether check the status of the service provider link whether it is up or not. Close this one. Next is logs, the system logs. System logs is nothing but the syslog of the SBC. So it is uh, giving some information on the user interface as well regarding some of the important processes. So as you can see over here, there is some root transport error which cannot it cannot route the message due to the transport errors, the date and all. More information is available on the CLI. We will see how we can enable and de disable the debug logs on the SBC in a while. But this particular window is just giving the some information regarding the, the logs available on the SBC for the important processes. The next is audit logs. So audit logs is nothing but whatever the steps or things that have been done on the user interface of the HBC that will be logged over here. As you can see, uh, we have arrived to different tabs during this session. So it is that's logged reg regarding all the details of that particular instances like server status, log viewer and incident statistics, dashboard, what are the changes that have been done on the user interface of the SPC. Close this one. The next is diagnostics. This is also one of the important step in the health check of the SBC. So it says full diagnostic where we can check the link between the SBC and the gateway. In other words, we can check the interface status like A1, A2, B1, B2. We can check the ping response from this interface towards the gateway and towards the DNS. The option is to start the diagnostic from over here. So once this diagnostic is completed, it gives a complete uh, status regarding the interfaces or the links that are currently up or down. So if you can see over here, uh, for A2 it is showing the link is down, the A2 interface. For the all the other interfaces, uh, the ping response as well towards the gateway or DNS is working fine. There is also an option to do a ping test from either of the interface M1, A1, A2 or B1 towards any particular destination IP to see if that particular IP is reachable from the SBC. This particular test uh, would be useful in case uh, when we are doing a ping test from the SBC interface towards the service provider uh, interface which is reachable on the public network. 
I'll close this one. The next is users, which shows how many users are currently logged in into the web interface of the SBC. So this is nothing but this the the users which are currently doing any kind of work on the SBC interface, or you can, we can say the SBC GUI interface. Next, we will talk about how to enable and disable the debug logs on the SBC and the EMS. So we need to come to device specific settings, troubleshooting, debugging. As we can see over here, there are two devices, EMS and SBC. We need to select the one where we need to enable the debug log. You can see over here, there are three different levels of warning, debug, info and warning. That are, that are the three different log levels. We need to select debug and info and then click on save. There is a message configuration update successful. So once this is done, the debugging logs would be enabled on the EMS. Similar steps are there for SBC. Important thing to note is there are also tab to enable the logs for the GUI. So here we can change the level to debug and then click on save. The logs that are enabled from here would be extracted or can be pulled only from the CLI. Important thing to note is once we have reproduced the issue and the logs have been imported from the system, we need to disable these debug logs. So we have logged into EMS CLI to check the path from where the debug logs can be downloaded from the system. So this is the particular path for downloading the CINDY files. These particular files, the CINDY log files would be important to analyze or debugging the issue regarding the call processing or there are any kind of issues with the SBC. So these particular CINDY files that are generated would be required for the TFR as well for checking the information on any kind of issues happening within the SBC. One of the last thing we need to see over here in troubleshooting section is trace. This is where we can enable the traces for the calls or the registration that is happening within the SBC. So the interface that can be selected over here is A1 or B1, whether we need to take the trace only for the external side or the internal side. When we are selecting any, it will be for both the interfaces. In case we need to provide any kind of filter for the local address IP with the or the port, the remote address. In case we need to provide any filter for, for the TCP or the UDP messages. Important thing to note over here is maximum number of packets to capture is 10,000. In case we need to capture more than that, we need to execute the TCP dump command via the CLI. We also need to provide the file name over here and then start capture. Once we start the trace, we can reproduce the issue like make the call which are failing so that those can be captured within these traces. 
Once that is done, we need to stop the capture. So once we have stopped the trace, the file can be retrieved from here in the captures tab. Once we click on the file name, it will be downloaded to our PC. And that can be used for the analysis purpose. So this completes the demo of this particular video. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, please write to mentor.avaya.com or you can follow us at Avaya Mentor on Twitter. For more details and other technical information, please visit support.avaya.com.